Welcome back. In the previous videos, we had seen how to use uh, logistic regression for multi-class problems. We had done that using a softmax function, if you remember. We had also looked at what the corresponding loss function was, etc. In this video, I want you to um, see a simple schematic, which will also tell you how exactly a matrix comes when you deal with weights with uh, multiple uh, classes, when we have multiple classes in multinomial logistic regression. So, let us consider a simple example. Let us say I have three input features. And let us say I have three output features also. y 1 hat, y 2 hat, y 3 hat. So, let us say this is a three class classification problem. You can think of multiple examples for this. For example, if I give height, weight and age, suppose you want to find out whether this person has no, no probability of heart disease or low probability of heart disease, medium probability of heart disease or high probability of heart disease. This is not quite a classification problem, but just as an example I can give you this. We will look at several examples or at least a few examples in the examples week, which will be around week 9 or so. So, you can think of any convenient example for yourself. And now, let us introduce our usual bias unit, which is 1 or x naught. And now, we want to find out what is y 1 hat, y 2 hat, y 3 hat. So, the portion that we are doing right now is the forward model. Okay. So, as usual y 1 hat is equal to soft max of the linear combinations of this w 0 plus w 1 x 1 plus w 2 x 2 plus w 3 x 3. Okay. That would be y 1 hat. Now, suppose I have y 2 hat. Now, y 2 hat is also soft max of some linear combination w naught let us say plus w 1 x 1 plus w 2 x 2 plus w 3 x 3. Now, suppose this w naught, w 1, w 2, w 3 were the same in both these cases, obviously you are going to get the same y 1 hat as well as y 2 hat, okay, because otherwise the functions are identical. So, this is not a good idea. So, you need different weights. So, we are going to use different weights here So, we need some terminology in order to distinguish these two weights. So, I will call it w naught 1, w 1 1, w 2 1, w 3 1, where the 1 stands for the output and the 0 1 2 3 actually starts for the input. Similarly, you can easily see that now this should be w naught 2, w 1 2, w 2 2 and w 3 2. Finally, if we come here, I need another set of weights. Okay. So, y hat 3 would be soft max of w naught 3, w 1 3 x 1, w 2 3 x 2 plus w 3 3 x 3. Okay. So, how many weights do we have? 4 unique weights in each one of these. So, you have 4 into 3 12 weights in order to account for the bias term also. So, how would we write this matrix wise? So, we have x vector which was 3 cross 1, we have y hat which is also 3 cross 1 and we have w which is now a weight matrix you can see w has two indices w i j 
has i is the input feature and j is the output feature. Okay. You had also seen uh, in the earlier video with XOR that you could have more than one layer. In that case typically we add an L here which denotes the level. Okay. So, you could have W i j 1, W i j 2, W i j 3 etcetera etcetera. So, you will have multiple weights. So, this is the large number of weights as you will see in next the and, and the next uh, the videos in the next week when we come to convolutional neural networks you have millions and millions of parameters in usual practical uh, neural networks that sit in today which is why they are extremely powerful. Okay. Coming back to this if we want to write y hat as w times x. Okay. So, just for this case I will make x as 4 cross 1 so that the 4 includes our bias unit also. So, you can write y hat as w x, x will be 4 cross 1, y will be 3 cross 1. So, if you want an appropriate w, please imagine what w should be, this should be 3 cross 4. In the general case, if y hat is k cross 1, where k is the number of classes and x is n cross 1, where n is the number of features, then w should have the size k cross n. Okay. Now, there are some people who will denote this w as w transpose, so as to be consistent with the notation I have used here. So, you might see this at multiple places, sometimes you will see w x, sometimes you will see w transpose x, sometimes you will also see w transpose x plus b, where b is a vector, the vector of biases. Okay. So, just to clarify this notation for you, please notice if we remove the bias separately, this will become b 1, this will become b 2 and this will become b 3, b vector is separated and w x is separated in such notations. So, we will be using this kind of notation as I said before, we will be using this interchangeably especially when it comes to future videos and future weeks. Thank you.